Hi, I'm Casey, back here with Wildwood Journal, A Mother's Delight. And this is part two of our curriculum choices for the 2019-2020 school year. Part two, I'm gonna share with you what um, individual courses I have for our fourth grader for language arts and math. So, um, kind of like with our history, we picked up the good and the beautiful toward the end of our last school year and so we got about 16 lessons in of level three and then um, kind of eased back and then into our summer break so we did like light school for a while and then no school for a few weeks and then now we're ready to jump back in so um, we really really enjoyed the switch to the good and the beautiful before that, we did, um, let's see, our first year we did learning language arts through literature, which was okay. Um, it became kind of monotonous for our son, where it was kind of like the same kinds of things over and over and over, and he wasn't really, things weren't sticking very well, if you will. Um, like, he was picking up this stuff, but he was... You could just tell like it was dull for him. Um, so we switched from that to, um, we tried math. Did we try math? No, we went from that to this. That's what we did. And it's a big difference because there's a lot more to the, than the beautiful curriculum, but in a good way. Um, there's more working pieces that really help round out the lesson time. So there's art and geography woven into the course book and um, reading and spelling, grammar rules, all of that stuff is woven in and makes for a very thorough curriculum. I might sneeze and I'm gonna apologize if I do. Um, so it comes with the course book, which is pretty thick but it's beautiful and there's like kind of some worksheet stuff but it's not like you're doing worksheets because they don't they don't look like worksheets to me because every page looks kind of different and the approach to the 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 lesson that you're learning that day is different so it doesn't look or feel like worksheet work um, plus it introduced the highlighter and that was a win for my son. He was so excited about that highlighter. So anyways, we are gonna pick up on this course with lesson 17 and then um, carry on and finish it either earlier or by the end of this year. Um, one thing you should know about The Good and the Beautiful is that it goes by levels, not by grades. So you could have a fourth grader doing level two or level three you could have a kindergartner well kindergartner probably doing kindergarten you could have a third grader doing level one um, they have an assessment on the website and I would highly encourage you if you're interested in this curriculum to have your child do that placement test so that um, it can fill in any gaps or um, pick up on any areas that may be a weakness that um, you may not have realized through other curriculums. Uh, side note, I will say, don't be quick to jump the gun to change curriculums. By all means, if, if it's not serving your family and your student well, then look for something different, but just be cautious that you're not always looking for the next thing because then you do run the risk of having several gaps in your child's education because while each curriculum is wonderful and may cover a lot of the same things just at different times, um, if you have one curriculum that hits a component early in the beginning um, and then move to a curriculum that also, or that hits it later, I'm sorry, I flipped that. If you have a curriculum that hits a component later and then you have another curriculum that hits it earlier, you could end up missing that window and then have that gap. So anyways, 
try not to be quick to jump off board of a curriculum, maybe um, do a different approach. And I can explain that a little bit more with our math here in just a minute. But anyways, so you have the course companion, which is your spelling words, and um, it's got some grammar rules, spelling rules, poetry memorization, different poems that your child can work to memorize, um, which is wonderful. I'm a big fan of memorizing scripture, poetry, things like that. Also a glossary of terms. So just a big help for your student as they go through the course. Um, that also comes with these readers. There's two readers for this course, level one and level two. And this um, part of your daily work with the language arts is that your child spends 20 minutes reading. Uh, my son and I, we do this together and he reads to me um, if there's a day that he's tired and maybe his brain is kind of not serving him to full capacity and we got through the book work and we just have to get through the reading, we will share the reading. So he'll read a page, I'll read a page, or he'll read a paragraph and I'll read a paragraph. And then that way he's still reading. Um, I don't want to ever have him have a negative feeling toward reading. So if that's me reading with him, then I will totally do that because we do so much reading throughout the day. Um, another piece is this book here, A Penny's Worth of Character. And I believe I flipped ahead and I think we will get into this here soon. And I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So I'm looking forward to um, getting into this book with our oldest. So that's his language arts that we are going to use for his fourth grade year. For math, this is also, um, this is a completely new choice for us. We did, well, we've done lots of maths. We started out with Saxon and did not go very long in that. That was not, we, we knew pretty quickly that that was not gonna work for our, our style of learning. So um, we went from that to Math Lessons for a Living Education from Masterbooks. And um, it was okay, it was, you know, they were short lessons. There's um, two sides of the fence to the math that the short lessons, the kid's gonna, your child's gonna learn all they're gonna learn in a 15 minute lesson that they would in an hour long lesson. And I can see a lot of truth to that. Um, however, it was just worksheet, like strictly worksheet work. And it got like, redundant and old and dull for him and he loves math and I want him to continue to love math. So when I was earlier talking about the don't be quick to change, um, you know, to jump a curriculum ship and onto another one, maybe look at how, if you can look at it differently. And so we went ahead and jumped ship of the master books one. It has these, the story at the beginning that tries to be like the living math and follow these two siblings um, but we never read the stories because they never really captivated our interest and so we are going to switch to horizons for his fourth grade year and I'm looking forward to this because I feel like if there's two areas that I want our son to be strong in it's math and language arts um, I, w I want him to have a appreciation for math and how it serves his everyday life and um, I want to share my love of our language and writing and reading with our son and so I'm hoping through having a very well-rounded language arts course for him that that will become a joy for him too. So um, with the horizons, I don't have much to tell you about it in the in the upfront part. It is like textbook looking, but my plan and what we've done with the first couple of lessons, we just got it out to kind of give it a try, is by bringing in like the manipulatives and activities and making it kinesthetic and as much as possible with the new concepts that it won't be just sitting at the table and doing numbers. Um, I, want, I want it to be fun and living for him. So 
um, as much as I am able and as much as Pinterest and other homeschool mamas are gonna help me out with what they have learned, we are gonna make sure that this workbook is as interactive as possible because boys, like they love to move. They don't like to sit still for very long. So if we are outside um, doing math problems with chalk on the sidewalk and throwing a ball back and forth with different things or I don't know we'll get creative because that's fun but that's what we have for our oldest for his um, individual coursework that he's going to do for language arts and math he also has handwriting sorry the good and the beautiful handwriting book we will be using um, we also have a creative writing book that we'll dabble in for some fun to kind of build his own writing style and um, words and expression things like that and then a typing course that we've dabbled in here and there i'm not going to push it huge he's fourth grade um while the kid knows how to navigate apps and touch screens and things like that i do think it's more important for him to learn how to use a computer as a tool and not just a toy so that um desire for him to learn that might grow in our third and fourth quarter as he gets more into writing. But right now, like I want, my goal is that he will um, just build his writing strength and his um, putting his ideas on paper. He loves to tell stories. He loves to illustrate stories. Um, but then from there, our goal is that our kids see technology as a tool and not a toy. And it's really easy for kids to see technology as a toy first instead of a tool because we give them all the fun apps and um, Netflix movies or Prime movies or whatever. So they get devices to be entertained with and not um, create with. So that's kind of um, my thought process with the whole typing thing. And um, yeah, so that's what his individual work is shaping up for. Um, Stay tuned for part three, which will be our little kindergartner's um, curriculum choices. So stay tuned or click the next video. I'm still figuring out how this whole works.